This video will introduce a variety of ideas from kinematics about specifically velocity and acceleration. Now, one thing, some students get really tricked up here because this seems fairly easy, and this is most likely the part of physics you've seen before. However, some of the things that we're going to be doing with it are not particularly easy, and this might be the first time that you're seeing calculus applied to this. So please don't skip through this thinking this is the easy part of physics. We're going to be doing some fairly tricky things in it, so the definitions are fairly important. This is actually exploring different parts of chapters 1 and 2, since chapter 1 talks about different representations of motion, like motion diagrams and plots, and that is related to velocity and acceleration. Chapter 2 gets into the details more of velocity and acceleration especially some simplifying models we can use. So this relates both to representations and problem solving, two of our major student learning outcomes. Representations are coming in with the different visual forms that we use, such as motion diagrams and plots. There's going to be many cases where the motion is described to you and you need to make one or both types of diagrams or perhaps a general sketch of the motion. Or vice versa, interpret a visual representation and actually describe what that motion is. The problem solving has to do more with the math, and in this case it's really about identifying what simplifications you can make. So later videos are going to talk about some specific models you can use, such as uniform motion and constant acceleration, but here we need to just figure out what's happening and what ideas you use to choose a model. So first we need some basic definitions, and this is going to have some overlap with things you've possibly seen in other videos already, but I just want to make sure we're always on the same page. So the first thing is that we're working with vectors right now. For many of the videos that you're going to see about motion, we're going to simplify down and talk about one-dimensional motion, so we won't need to use the vector representation per se, but right now we're talking in general, so these are vectors. So when we talk about position, we might use the R vector. So this could be, in fact, X and Y coordinates together, perhaps even a Z component. Um, but right now, we don't need to worry about that too much. Displacement is, in fact, the change in position. So we use that delta symbol. If this is new to you, you might want to go back and look at some of the notation videos that I've posted. And that, by definition, must be the final minus initial. Once we talk about velocity, this is in fact the time derivative of our position. And again, later when we talk about this in more detail, we're going to focus on the one-dimensional aspect of this initially. Now when we go to acceleration, this is in fact the time derivative of our velocity vector. Now again, these are defined as vectors here. And initially, if we're talking about things happening in a constant manner, we might need to not actually use calculus. We might be able to simplify down and think about these things just in terms of geometry or just division. But the general definition to know is actually in terms of calculus. Later on, we're going to be making distinctions between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. And in particular, the definitions I'm giving you here are for instantaneous velocity. Average velocity is normally going to be useful when these things are constant, such that our instantaneous velocity or instantaneous acceleration is equal to a constant, which means that, as over time, integrating a constant gives you the same average. Here are a few different models that you're going to learn, especially in Chapter 2, that is going to allow you to really simplify your motion. And in this case, we're thinking largely about one-dimensional motion, in later chapters, we get into two-dimensional motion. So uniform motion is when we have a constant velocity that points in one direction. So because we have a constant velocity, so same speed, same direction, we just have one dimension to deal with, and we don't have any acceleration to worry about whatsoever. And there's a simple equation we can use here to describe our final position in terms of our initial position, and then that uniform, that constant velocity, and a change in time. And uniform motion is described in more detail in a later video. Constant acceleration is going to be something that we actually see the most frequently, and in this case we have a constant acceleration. Now again, this could be something happening in two dimensions, so we might need to worry about that. 
and our motion overall could be in two dimensions even though our acceleration is just in one dimension and that's going to be again one of our most constant situations or most uh, frequent now in one dimension we say that our final uh, position and again I'm using s as a general coordinate here you could use either x or y is going to oops that's a typo is going to equal your initial position plus your initial uh, velocity in that direction. Now one thing to note here is that our velocity is in fact changing if we have a non-zero acceleration, but this is your initial velocity, hence the sub-zero, in that same direction. And again, whatever your, your change in time is. And then you have your acceleration in that direction, which we're assuming to be constant, times time squared and this factor of one half. So this is something you'll see a lot, hopefully not with the typo. Now, the third thing to think about is what happens if we have a non-constant acceleration? Now, this is actually going to be not that common. And the reason for that is that in physics, we want to simplify things as much as possible. And normally, we can simplify to have a constant acceleration. Now, in the case where we can't do that, we actually are going to need to use calculus. So that's not something that I will focus on too much, uh, and we won't see that again in this video, but you will in fact have to use calculus to go from your functional form of acceleration to get your functional form of velocity and then your functional form of position. There's not a simplification that can be used.